Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Ubiquity, oh, this thing's heavy, Ubiquity Edge Switch 48 500 watt. So this is sort of their big daddy uh, edge switch, 48 ports uh, with two SFP ports and two SFP plus ports and more features than you could ever possibly use in a switch. You could actually configure these Ubiquity switches as routers if you want. Um, I've never done that. I like to use a router as a router, uh, but it is possible. There are more features in this thing than I can even describe to you. So let's take a look at what comes inside the box. Uh, first of all, these things are pretty hefty, but they're supposed to be. I mean, these are a, a, a serious data center switch, but uh, they come at a pretty decent price when you compare them to comparable HP or Cisco switches. The 48-port 500-watt version is about $760 US, and the Edge Switch 48-port 750-watt version is about uh, 875 bucks US. So not too bad. So inside the box, we get our quick start guide, power cable, and mounting brackets, uh, or mounting screws for putting it into a 19 inch rack. So here's the switch itself. Oh. Man, these things are beefy. I've set up a bunch of these switches and I've never really had a problem with them. Uh, I actually like this switch a lot. So pretty standard switch stuff. We've got four, port one over here, 48 ports, and then we've got your SFP ports here. So the first two are two SFP plus ports. The second two are two standard SFP ports. Uh, if you are looking for which SFPs are compatible with this switch, you can just search, you know, Ubiquity SFP compatibility, something like that. There's a couple of different threads on the UBMT forums that talk about which SFPs work well with these switches. Okay, on the back we've got power, a console port, and then somewhere here is the little reset switch. Yeah, here it is, right here. On the far right-hand side is just a little tiny reset hole if you ever need to factory default this thing. Okay, so uh, that's about all there is to it. Man, I'm telling you this thing's heavy. It's probably about, probably about 10 to 15 pounds. <laughs> uh, but again, it's made to go into a data center. Um, and actually though, for going into a data center, these are surprisingly quiet. They're um, not as loud as you would expect. I've got an older 24-port uh, PoE switch that's like easily twice as loud as this one. Granted, it's probably 10 or 12 years old, but um, the newer technology actually keeps them relatively quiet. It's not something that you would want in your bedroom, <laughs> but uh, for a data center, it's uh, it's a decently uh, it's got a decent amount of um, quietness. <laughs> it's it's decently quiet. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and uh, plug this in, get it turned on, and then we're gonna go through the initial configuration of the Edge Switch 48 500 watt. Okay, so I've got the Edge Switch 48 plugged in, and by default, it receives an IP address from DHCP. So you can use the Ubiquity Discovery tool, or you can just pop into your DHCP leases to find out which IP address the switch was given. Once you have the IP address, pop that into a browser, and you want to log in with UBNT as the username and UBNT as the password the first time. That's the default username and password. Check the box to agree to the terms of the license agreement and log in. I get a lot of questions from time to time about how to properly size these switches for an environment. So they do make two flavors of these switches, the 500 watt version and the 750 watt version. And you can do all the calculations for how many devices that you're going to plug into, PoE devices I mean, phones, access points, surveillance cameras, whatever PoE devices you might have, they're going to plug into this switch. Each one of those is going to have a certain amount of watts and volts that it's going to take up in the switch itself. So you can sort of calculate on a per device basis how many devices are going to be in the switch, blah, 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 and actually figure out if you need the 500 watt or the 750 watt version. But I don't do that. I try to keep things simple. And generally, I tell customers, if you're going to have half or fewer of the ports 
of this 48 port switch populated by PoE devices, then you're fine with the 500 watt version. If you're gonna have half or more of the devices of the ports populated with PoE devices, then you're gonna wanna uh, spend the extra bucks and get the 750 watt version. And so far, that formula has not let me down. So um, again, half or fewer of the ports, 500 watts, half or more of the ports go for the 750 watt version. Okay. So we can see that by default, we have a very, very old version of firmware. So we're gonna do a few things here. We're gonna first update the firmware. We're gonna second set a static IP address. And third, we're going to set the password to something other than UBNT. So let's do those last two things first. We'll do the firmware last. So to change the password, we wanna come over here to system, users, and then click on accounts. Here we have just one user, the UBNT user. So I'm gonna click on this. Best practices would dictate also changing the username. I'm not gonna do that in this case. So we're just gonna edit that user and we're gonna give it a different password. Oh, let me make sure I've got the right password here. Okay, so we're gonna give it a different password. Boom, boom, and we're gonna just hit submit. Okay. That's done. As soon as you make a change to the device, you want to come up here to the upper right hand corner and click save configuration. Now, in this version of firmware, it gives you a little pop up that says, hey, you've got, you know, a configuration change you need to save. But in later versions of the firmware, as we'll see when we update the firmware, it actually now turns red and glows whenever you have a configuration that needs to be saved. So it's a little bit easier to see. And they got rid of that pop up. Okay, so we've now set our password to something different. Let's go ahead and set the IP address statically. To set the IP address, you go to System, Connectivity, IPv4. And here we can see by default, it was given 192.168.1.102. Uh, so you select None for the network configuration protocol. And then you change the IP address to whatever you want it to be. In my case, it's going to be 192.168.1.3. Go ahead and click Submit. And now it doesn't actually redirect to the new IP address. So you have to uh, open it up in a browser. I like to run a ping. So if we come over here, we can see ping 192.168.1.3. And then we should see that it has now changed to that new IP address. And we can bring it up in a browser separately. So 192.168.1.3. Oops, it added a port on the end. Okay, and we're back at our login screen. So UBNT, let's give it our new password. There we go. So now we have updated the password. We've set a static IP. Final thing to do is to download the firmware from Ubiquity and install it. Now, if you go out to ubnt.com slash download, navigate through till you find the edge switch 48, just download whatever the latest firmware is and you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and update the firmware. I already have it downloaded. We're gonna go to System, Firmware, Configuration and Upgrade. So what we see here is that our current active firmware is 1.01 and our current backup firmware is 1.01 as well. So the way that you update firmware, this is very similar to how you would do it in any enterprise switch is we're going to change the backup firmware to the latest version. And then we're going to set the backup firmware as the firmware that's active the next time we reboot the switch. So basically upgrade it as the backup firmware and then say next time you reboot, use the backup firmware and not the old firmware. Uh, and you can set that down here. So first click this button right here to download or upgrade firmware. Click choose file. And then you're gonna wanna select the edge switch firmware that you downloaded from Ubiquity. In my case, uh, as of you know September 19th, 2016, it is version 1.6. So then you click begin transfer and now you wait because the begin transfer takes about four or five minutes. Okay, so the firmware finished uploading. We can see now that I've got active firmware 1.01 and backup firmware 1.6.0. So under here where it says next active, I wanna click on 1.6.0 and then I wanna hit submit. Now, once again, this is gonna take about four or five minutes to apply the firmware and reboot the device. So what I typically like to do is just run a persistent ping, ping-t192.168.1.3 and then that will show me 
when the device goes down and then when the device comes back up. All right, so I lied. It saved the configuration, but you actually have to restart the switch manually. So to restart the switch, uh, you come over here to System, Utilities, Restart Switch, and then go ahead and say Reset. And OK. Now I run the persistent ping. <laughs> and now when it comes back up, we can see it's timing out. Uh, when it comes back up, it should be on the latest version of the Edge Switch software. And don't worry if this takes a little while. Again, all of the maintenance of this switch takes a, a, you know, a couple minutes every time you're doing something. Not just regular changes and stuff, but anytime you're uploading the firmware, resetting the switch. This is an enterprise product, so it does take a little bit of time to reboot and then come back to where it was. Okay, so our switch is back up and we can see now that the firmware version is 1.6.0. I guess I can't select the text there. Anyways, firmware has been updated and now it's time to finish off the switch configuration, adjust your ports, add your VLANs, whatever you're gonna do with this switch to get it ready to rock and roll. So I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.